Hikea Ottoman. This one I think is going to be fun. So I wanted to give you an idea of the frame for this one. Uh, my husband and I used scrap wood for this frame. So if you can see the back of this. It is two by fours. Two two by fours and then a, a two by two. And it's just because that's what we had on hand. And my husband makes all of my frames for me and he just uses a finish nailer to nail in the sides. If you don't have a finish nailer, you could use uh, screws to screw in the side of the frame right here. And to get this frame, we took the ottoman, here's the ottoman, and um, the inside of the frame is the measurement of the diameter of the ottoman. So that's how we got the dimensions. And then um, when I got it inside the frame, I also did this one on the top. So I framed it on the top, my tacks are on the top instead of on the sides. <coughs> And then I will take my little tool here and pop out all of these tacks now that I am done. Just like that. And this little tool is very, very handy. If you don't have a tool like this, you can use a little flathead screwdriver to get in there and pop them out that way. And then uh, for the outline of it, once I had the fabric stretched onto the frame and tacked, so it was ready to go. Then I set my, so I worked from this side. I worked from the top side so I could, because I had the two by four, it was nice and deep so I could put my needle in and sit on the couch and do it. So I worked from the front side. So when I had this in there, I went ahead and took this, the ottoman, placed it on top of the frame and used, and then, kind of pushed it down so it could be touching the fabric and then I just used a sharpie and traced the circle of the ottoman. So that's how I got that on there. And then I used a marker to guide the stripes. I, I, I put my template on by drawing on the actual canvas. That's what I did for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the frame and I will be back. All right, so I've got it removed from the frame and I am um, going to, yeah, I'm going to glue this so my monk's cloth doesn't fray too much. And to glue, I have the PVA, uh, pH neutral PVA, deal for book binding and paper projects. And I'm just going to put a bead of glue on the outside. Using the tip of the bottle to kind of make it go into the fabric. And just do that all the way around. Okay, so the glue has dried on the edge sides and it's a little gooey but it looks really good. And I have gone and trimmed my fabric all the way around about three inches. And the reason for that is that I am just going to tuck it under as I work. And I didn't want to mess with too short of a fabric for it to fray even more. And it's going to, I think it'll lay just fine underneath here because there, it's just an ottoman. And so I left a lot just to make it easier on me and I think it will fold under nicely that it won't make a big difference if there's too much fabric. So so my uh, my kids uh, ripped my ottoman cover so mine's already kind of easy to get off and I am just tearing it at the seams here. I'm going to use the stitching on the um, ottoman cover here to for my piece so I am um, so I just want to tear it or rip it or cut it right next to the top of the seam. So we take the top off, just the top, 
we'll leave the outside. And then we're going to lay this on top and we're just going to fold it nicely under just like that. I'm going to do it now, but as we're working, I'll probably adjust it. So this is just a rough guesstimation. So tuck it a little bit all the way around. There we go. And then we are going to use a tapestry needle. A tapestry needle is a thicker needle with a uh, bigger head. And I am using upholstery thread, <laughs> thread, upholstery thread and tapestry needle. And what we're going to do is we are going to insert our needle into the ottoman first. And there are already seams in this piece. And those seams um, are already sewed in there using some kind of fancy um, sewing machine and I'm going to use those holes for my needle. So I just stick it in the first hole and pull it all the way through so our knot is hidden. And I did knot the end of my, my thread and I did it three times as a thicker, but I didn't want it to come through. And then we're going to stick our needle through the monk's cloth and I kind of am leaving about of a half an inch of fabric when I do this. So I'm inserting my needle through inside one and then I come out the other side like that. And then I will go and insert it into the hole of the ottoman. And then I will pull it tight. And when we pull it tight, we can guide that monk's cloth down in there a little bit further. And I'm not worried about the monk's cloth showing, so you might see it a little bit. But if you don't want it to show, then uh, just kind of adjust it as you go and adjust your string. So then we do the same thing. We insert it in and out of the monk's cloth. Find your seam hole and pull it through. get close to your loops as much as possible. In and out, find the hole, and guide your needle through. And you will do that, that's called a whip stitch, and you're just going to do that all the way around. And when you get to a spot, you're, you'll tie a knot into it, and you'll get another thread, and you'll just keep going. I find the key to getting the loops close to the edge of the ottoman is getting your needle as close to your yarn, yarn loops as you can. And then, so then when you pull... Um, pull the fabric down, it pulls the yarn loops next to the, the paper of the ottoman. So pull it down in there. Just like so. And then when you get to the end of your string, to tie it off, we're going to go back up to your first stitch here, or your last stitch. We're going to insert the needle in behind that stitch and then pull it through and get it up next to it. It's kind of a crisscrossy little X thing. And then we're going to insert your needle on the same side again to get it to go through same side again to get it to go through and then when you pull it through this time we're going to actually you'll have a little bit of a loop here with your string and you're going to insert your needle 
on the other side of that loop to make the knot. And then you will tie it up close up here. So it's hidden up further closer to your loop so you can't see it as well. And then I would do that a couple more times. Insert the needle and make a knot. In completing the rest of this project, I ran into an issue, so I thought I would share that with you. I um, did it all the way around, and I switched to every other hole because it was hurting my fingers. It does hurt your fingers. So if you have a cream-colored thread, and like I have a black because that's what I had on hand, but if you get a matching cream-colored uh, thread, you could easily do every other or even every three, and it wouldn't take you quite as long. And I made it all the way to halfway around and then it was getting hard for me to pull the fabric on this side. It was um, too, too far away from the edge and it was hard for me to pull it. So to fix that, I went and um, took exactly halfway through, I went and pulled the fabric there and made it and made just two stitches. I made two stitches to kind of pull it tight so I had a reference. And then I went and unzipped the rest of it because you can unzip this ottoman. So I unzipped the top of it so I could release the tension. And then once I released the tension, it was very easy to um, stitch the side. And so now I'm working on this piece right here, kind of the exactly halfway. And then once I have this one pulled, now that it's kind of tight here, I'm gonna go ahead and zip it back up because I was um, finding that I was getting some bunching in my paper and I don't want that. So I'm gonna put it back on and zip it up again and keep stitching so it will be nice and tight and I can use the actual ottoman to help me make it tight all the way around. So here you can kind of see the gapping right here. And I was worried as I worked I would get bubbles in my paper. So in order to fix that, I found if I zipped it back up like so, it lays really nicely and I don't have to guide it as much or worry about those bubbles. Mm -hmm.